come. <laughs> Let's go! Time! It was a good one this time. Hello, beautiful people. Live from Austin, Texas. Joined by my BFF in uh, some other city. It's JRY. Hello, beautiful people. It's Night Attack. What's going on, buddy? You uh, yeah, uh busy day, busy day. Live in uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia Freedom is a song that Elton John once sung about a competitive women's tennis league, and uh, and that is where I am right now. Big day, man. Covering the DNC. Big this is day. this is your second uh, day of conventions that you're doing for BTN for BitTorrent News. Yep. Are, uh, I watched, like, I probably turned on the coverage like a, a billion times, but then every time it would turn away from Justin, I would realize that I'm watching the DNC and then get distracted and look at something else. But yeah. uh, every time I saw you on, you just looked so like, like it's like, oh, you've been there, you've done this, you know how this goes. And, uh, and then it definitely cut away from Bill Clinton giving this giant big speech to you leaned over with a beer in your hand, <laughs> giving giving uh, Night Attack style commentary. I loved it. It was freaking amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, I mean, that's got to be a surreal thing because I know for me, whenever I have a hard time listening to podcasts that have that are, are staffed exclusively by people that I talk to regularly, like Cord Killer. I love Cord Killers. It's a great show. I can't listen to it. Oh, no, because, because you, you, you turn into that crazy person yelling at the at, or, or talking calmly to the to the radio. Well, or yeah, it's like I'm on a conference call that I'm muted on. Right. And I just become frustrated that nobody's listening to the things I'm saying. Uh, and, and so I can only imagine that it's a bit of a weird situation because I have been in your living room or, or in your studio in that probably that exact same pose with a beer like watching something and making wry commentary on it so it had to be like a weird situation to just see that with the uh, uh with, with, you with know the, what's funny is I, I didn't think anything to me it was exactly like watching you be a panelist on twit or any of the other or, or whenever i tune in a dtns and you're on and stuff i'm like oh he's doing pundit thing and um, but, but then, but then I show up to give my support because we're getting ready for show mode, and everybody yeah. in the chat, yeah, those those rascally jackals in chat realm, are all like, "Oh, so you jealous of his new best friend who's not you <laughs> doing awesome snark stuff? Be jealous! We want to fight!" And I was like, "Not happening, bro. We have a we have a trusting no. relationship." I know, man. Come on, like. Number one, Brian and I, uh, our, our relationship is 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 wide and open. <laughs> it is it is uh, it is it is definitely a fun time. Listen, Brian, uh, you know, co mingles his comedy juices with uh, you know Jason Murphy. I come and cover the conventions. Uh, it, it's it's all it's all in the game, baby. It's a key party, a comedy yeah. key party. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We're all secret. Look, we all have herpes, so don't even worry about it. What does it matter? It's like Listen, at that point. Yes, yes, I have herpes, but don't worry, I'm taking medication. <laughs> that's right. Hey, um, that's an unfortunate line for my segue here. Uh, just before the show. Bonnie was like, uh, oh, I guess we're starting late. It was like, yeah, well, Bill Clinton's talking or whatever. And so she watches. And then uh, at some point she's like, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got to go to bed. <clears throat> so she yeah. pours herself a, gl a glass of wine and she gets in bed. Yeah. Fifteen minutes later, the phone rings. Uh -huh. she's, okay. And she's instantly doing material. <laughs> Like, like she, the phone rings and I know she's in the bedroom. I'm just around the corner and she's immediately like, uh, she's like, so if Bill Clinton's the first lady, does that mean he's going to have his like nutrition education thing or whatever? And I was like, yeah, that's what first ladies do. I'm sure they're already figuring out uh, what, what his cause is going to be. And it's like, I'm confused yeah. why she's calling me over for that. Right. And then she starts going into us stuff. She's like, she's like. Did you know that the oldest uh, <laughs> Obama daughter uh, has a peanut allergy? And I was like, uh, no, no, I, did. I didn't know that. You're like, well, you know, it just shows, you know, 
uh, what, Republicans wouldn't elect no uh, peanut allergy having <laughs> first daughter. And I'm like, what is going on? And then she's, and then I, I realize like she, she just wants to do the show, but she doesn't want to stay up late enough to do it with <laughs> you guys watching. She just <laughs> needs to get this out of her system. And so I'm just all like, I'll, and so I'm like, uh, uh, she's like, she's like, oh, you don't, I don't know if you think I'm funny. And I was like, no, I think you're hilarious. I think you should be on our, po- our comedy award winning podcast. Which you are most weeks. In fact, it's only these last two that have been really late <laughs> yes. and you know, we just can't do it. I you- love those conversations where you walk in and you don't realize that you've walked into a show and then somebody <laughs> stops talking and they're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, okay, okay, I guess I'm just not funny. I guess I'm just not funny. Yes, well, and that's the thing, right, is is you, you said suddenly... Oh, by the way, I'm a chronic. I, I do that all the time. I've been that guy too, right? And being oh, on the yeah. other side, God. it's like you suddenly feel the, the curtain of shame <laughs> unfurl before you, and you feel all alone. And it's like uh, some part of your brain, the submarine captain shouts, uh, you know, pull out the self-doubt. We need all the self-doubt you got. Exactly. Go. yeah. Fire it in! Fire it into the to the kiln! The kiln. The fire! <laughs> <laughs> Pull back the curtain. Pull back the curtain. We're good. We're good. It's but, fine. But it was funny because like there were three things she was just like, well, you know, I just don't ever get to, you know, you don't think I'm funny. You never, I never get to say all this stuff. I was like, you literally do it every week. And you're like, well, I, I think she specifically said, I don't get to talk about this stuff right after saying the um, <laughs> the the first daughter peanut allergy thing, and I was yeah. like, "You have a character, an entire alter ego, who says way more severe stuff about food allergies than you're saying right now." It, it was amazing. Uh, so, I mean, do we need to maybe like make her feel a little better? Like that? Like maybe everybody should tweet her and just say, "Hey, the show sucks." <laughs> like since they've they've taken it to a later time frame. Well, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> so what's funny is I was thinking, yeah, let's put out a compliment bomb and, and put out good vibes. And yeah. you're like, no, let's make her, let's activate the shame curtain, but for oh, her failure to, to stay way? awake that long. <laughs> We're just like, LOL, finally, this show takes off. <laughs> no, 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 I was saying, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, Bob, uh, um, <laughs> Body likes doing the show, but but it's late. Uh, I love Body doing the show. And I think, listen, if you enjoy Body doing the show, then feel free at Invisible Wife on Twitter. Uh, I'm sure she would love to hear everybody talking about how much she's great on the show. But I will be joining you. Me and my <laughs> tiny spoon will be joining you. Yeah, what's up with your what's up with your tiny spoon? What's going on here, tiny spoon? I don't know. Well, there we go. <laughs> Look at Bryce uh, tweeting. Uh, uh, we love. You. <laughs> he writes, "We love you." The show sucks now without you. <laughs> um. All right, here, Brian. We'll do a real quick uh, uh, uh seg one because I got a, I got a, I got a real story for you okay. that I feel like we can, we can uh, dovetail into a few different stories. Great. In seg two, number one, folks, I'm just gonna let you know this. I don't want to do the show right now. <laughs> oh no! Like, are, are you are you fired there, up, upset, or tired, or what? No, no. I was on eight and a half hours on the internet yesterday. I was on, I think, six hours on the internet tonight. If there was ever a chance for us to skip the show, if even because we got the special show coming up next Saturday, and maybe we could, you know, push it back and do fuzzy math and, and count this. Oh, over you, here. you're close enough. You wanted to what a math it. You would be like, well, if we, we squint could, real we could, hard, we could, we could, could right? Could, uh, yeah. One another reason why we don't because of everybody who supports us at patreoncom slash night attack. That is where you guys make this thing happen. Because I'll tell you what, there was a moment today where I had that doubt. I had that down in my brain, folks, and I was like, maybe we could do this and we could switch stuff around. The next thing you know, Brian went and sent me all the money we earned last month. <laughs> and I was like, nope, I don't know what, we should do the show. Oh, dude, hang on, let me get, I got to figure out, here, I, I want to play my favorite game. Uh, you keep talking about how great, where, where do people go to support us? People ask me that all the time. Patreon.com slash night attack. Again, that is patreon.com slash night attack. Uh, we want to thank everybody. We uh, we have some stuff uh, here brewing in the background. Uh, uh, so we have some amazing people that are currently 
reviewing all of the tracks that we have recorded for the new album. So we will start. Yeah, dude, this uh, is happening. Our Chinese democracy is finally coming true. Can you believe it? Uh, dude, I cannot. And, and in fact, uh, if you guys are excited for our new album, uh, just imagine how excited we are since we've forgotten literally everything we've recorded. Well, we're going to be hearing it for the first year. time. I, what, I don't know which is weirder, hearing what I'm willing to confess in a sound booth with you or, or discovering like every so often I'm like, man, we're kind of funny. That was that was a funny story. I can't believe that. that. That's crazy. Here's my favorite part about you and, and all of our album, the album process, is that there's what we record, which is everything, yep. right? There's what we keep which is also everything except the things that are, are not to be kept are marked like, you know, never, ever play. Like, but, you but know, sometimes just, they're like specifically uh, uh, labeled career ending racism or whatever yeah, on there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we, we, we go ahead and look at them. All right. So these, these uh, photoshops were all from uh, there was a, uh, a protest. As soon as Bernie Sanders gave away all of his delegates to Hillary Clinton to make her the first female president, uh, presidential nominee from a major party. Uh, a bunch of very angry Bernie Sanders uh, supporters and delegates came streaming out of the Wells Fargo arena right across this little pathway here and into our rickety tents that they put all the media in, right? And they staged this sit-in. So right behind me is where we, we kind of pulled that over right next to our set so I could like weather girl like exactly Point where they live were and where, and where we were, right? Like yeah. just to, to illustrate, kind of give everybody a bit more of an idea of what was happening. Uh, and so somebody uh, <laughs> has, I think it was uh, the, the immortal Sergeant Muffin who, who did the first screen grab and, and there have been all sorts of Photoshop sets. But that is very funny. So there we go. Uh, but yeah, listen, um, we, uh, you know, there, there's what we record, there's what we keep, and then there is the, the rough drafts once we kind of get it out to everybody, or get it out to, you know, me, Brian, you know, everybody else that's helping produce it, at which point begins Brian's oh security clearance. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, <laughs> kicking in the door with wine in hand, <laughs> Bonnie the Invisible Wife has just hey! joined us in the room. Hey, this uh, is great. This let's scramble to get her you. a microphone. <laughs> you weren't here, so I did my best to forward <laughs> to forward your sentiments about uh, uh, a great many things. Uh, I, I said that basically you announced that it was too late and you weren't going to be joining us. And then you uh, called me 15 minutes later and started just doing the show. <laughs> for just literally on the phone from the next room. It was time for the show. <laughs> <laughs> she had to get the news out. Yeah. Uh, all right. Speaking of the news, uh, by the way. Um, hey, wait. No, no, no. I wasn't done. This is my favorite part about the albums. Oh, yes. Is that we get, we get the tracks. And then Brian listens to them and immediately compiles, and it's usually two, maybe three, lists of tracks that need to get body security clear. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that need oh. to get run up the ladder, and it's like yeah. it is. It is like House of Cards. It's like The West Wing. <laughs> it's like Veep. It's like any political drama where it's like all of a sudden Brian and I are like, all right, yeah, okay. Well, that one's really, really good. Uh, if you're gonna die on a hill, then you gotta die on that hill. <laughs> like you know, like maybe, <laughs> let's fake her out. Listen, throw in I got this one track. It's kind of a garbage track, but in it, I admit to five crimes. Maybe she'll call it on that one, and then we could do the other one. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Maybe we could just shock and awe on this one where yeah, I, I yes. talk about you know, uh, you you know are... drunk driving, and instead <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to get away with this one where I uh, you know reference something about my family. You. Uh, Definitely, definitely got uh, way specific on there. <laughs> like, 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 not enough, Brian. It needs to be funnier. We have to admit which crimes might have been implicated in there. We, uh, I, I was actually trying to think of random ones that we hadn't, that we hadn't done. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if Brian, there was one remember? where you were drunk driving, then I forget. Uh, oh, so, uh, hey, real quick. I, uh, somebody out there is jogging right now. Yeah. I hope. I love it. I love that you think that... Or, People are listening to us while we're while they're jogging. Yeah, well, I don't know what this they could be doing, doing. Whatever they want to do when they're yeah, listening to the show. Yeah, but it. it's gonna be weird right. when I suddenly call out Cecil Craddock. 
You think oh, we didn't know? Cecil. Oh, Cecil Craddock. Oh, no, 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 right no, now, no. You doing know what, whatever so, you do. Cecil. You know what Cecil Craddock is Cecil. doing right now? Yeah, what's Cecil Craddock doing? He's being responsible, and he's like taking the trash out. And he's my favorite person because he makes the world a better place. By yeah, taking he's trash taking the out trash right out, balls deep. <laughs> <laughs> Cecil Craddock. That's what he calls it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, oh my yeah, gosh. man. Uh, that's just part of the Cecil Craddock uh, process. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the way we teach <laughs> the our Cecil kids. Cecil Craddock method. <laughs> yeah, the Cecil Craddock method. <laughs> yeah, first do no harm, <laughs> going balls deep. <laughs> Anyway, thank you to everybody who <laughs> makes it possible. We crossed over 1,600. We're over 1,600 <gasps> patrons. What? Do you need this? Yeah, the run to this, 1776 is, is on. I'll tell you what, man. We will bring back the hats and monocles if we hit 1776 patrons. So that's only, what, 170 yeah. people just need to give whatever a, a buck, amount. You know, uh, a buck, a ruck, a, uh, <laughs> give a us climb a, of five. A buckus for ruckus. <laughs> a, a, a a dime to shine. To sh See, so crying goes deep. <laughs> a nickel in your balls deep in pickles? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, that didn't work? Uh, do I need to get it back to bed? <laughs> Brian will go balls deep in pickles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man, that's a, that's a challenge. Well, I'm kind let's, of fascinated. let's put a pin in that. Uh, we can <laughs> get back to it later. I'm kind of fascinated by this balls deep. I'm like, I don't have balls, and I don't know what balls deep oh, really Oh, you've never means. been balls deep in anything. No. <laughs> what, what a poor life. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, hold on. it's really a what, strange what, phrase. What? <laughs> I feel, no, like, I feel like we should <laughs> simulate something. that experience for you. That I mean, I, I'm imagining like I'm like out in a swampy area, and then and then all of a sudden I find myself Very like often literally true. like I I'm like oh my gosh now I'm balls deep in the mud, but that's probably not the interpretation. No, you mean for no, it. you you probably uh, colloquially uh, maybe. Laid, laid. No, 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 Brian, shut up. Funny, uh, what else does it sound like? It might. Be <laughs> it sounds like. It sounds like when I I go wading through my daughter's room and there's like <laughs> there's no, teddy no. There's, there's teddy bears everywhere and now I'm balls deep in teddy bears. <laughs> or wait, or wait, maybe, maybe because my husband doesn't take the trash out very often. So now we're back to the trash. Not like she's Socratic. I walk not like into, No, I wish. But then I go Is into she's Socratic the... your boyfriend? Is that what's going on? Oh, I wish. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, go into the kitchen after he's so, been right, cooking so up his stir Brian fry. Doesn't take the trash out. Yeah, <laughs> so now I'm balls deep in the trash again. What? Is, what does it mean? <laughs> Can I be boobs deep into something if it was just a little deeper? <laughs> if, you took if I just a kept falling, I'm oh, boobs God. deep now. <laughs> <clears throat> Huh. Well, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cecil Craddock, for making it possible. Wait, uh, all right, <sighs> Cecil Craddock is a great guy. You want to know? Uh, all right, so we're here. Uh, let me give you guys a, a sense of, of what this is uh, as compared to uh, what was happening. Oh, that's a television. Uh, that is the hallway. Right there, that hallway was where all the Bernie Sanders people were having their sit-in uh, earlier tonight. Uh, but this is where we are in, in Philadelphia. Uh, all of the different little areas that are cordoned off are different media outlets. So we got the Associated Foreign Press. Uh, I think New York One is, is right behind us. Uh, and here we are on our, on our little set. Uh, periodically, other, especially media people are wandering around all the time. And if you're a media nerd, then you can recognize, uh, you can recognize some of them. Uh, all of a sudden, I come back on set, and I see someone holding something that looks familiar. And it's a if this story is headed where I think it is, I assume that in your mind it's like there's something that. It, 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 um, can I guess? Can I can I guess? It's kind of like when I met Ron Richards at Revision Three. I acted like we knew each other. And it wasn't until like four hours later I discovered we didn't know each other. I just watched his show. And and I genuinely just 
couldn't process that we weren't already friends because in my mind, that's how it was. You are, yeah, that you already, and this happens all the time. This is the kind of the basis of Diamond Club when it comes to uh, showing up, and especially we will be, by the way, we will be at CreateCon live this Saturday in Orlando, Florida. Go to createcon.com to get your tickets. Uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. Uh, but no, this was somebody that was holding something that everybody in the chat room would immediately recognize. In fact, it is so recognizable that I thought it was a replica of that thing. Go on. I see the unmistakable brown hue of Triumph the Insult comic dog. On what I assume on the has to set. be. On, on the BitTorrent set. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, 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 wait. So, so are they shooting a Triumph bit, and they're going around making jokes about Darknet, and 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 we're like, uh, "Hey, nice, nice set. Could you not afford it since you stole all of Hollywood's movies?" I, uh, no, I mean, because this was being held by somebody that wasn't Robert Smigel. Oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. All right. So you saw the prop, uh, and you recognized and it as not the guy. I do know that Funny or Die, Funny or Die is literally like right uh, across the, the the way there. In fact, this is probably going to end with me telling this story. And then, uh, you know, the person that I'm going to talk about, like, literally walking right behind me. And it'll be even more awkward. Nice. Um, but, uh, but Funny or Die is right across the way. And apparently they needed to print stuff out. So they were using our printer. And so I look and I'm like, oh, crap. I guess initially I'm like, oh, I guess it's like, I don't know. Maybe people are, have funny, you know, insult comic dog like things. And, and that's it. And then I realized, like, I started to put two and two together. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's crazy. And then... I look over who is sitting over the printer, and it is Robert Smigel himself. So somebody else is holding the dog, and so you recognize the dog first, and then you recognize yeah. Robert Smigel using your uh, printer on your turf. Yeah, yeah, using, using the printer right here, right? So, uh, like, there – here, Brian, where are you at on, on – celebrity interactions like because uh, because I, I i personally have i don't like autographs i never know what to do with them yep uh i i, I really am not a big picture guy especially i'll, this is I'll work. spring for a picture what's funny is i i don't i don't often go for a picture, picture in at and a of party itself. Maybe. picture at a party well exactly but, if i am doing a picture i'm doing it for not me i'm doing it for someone else because like i know i hung out and met with so-and-so but like like for example after knowing richard garriott and uh, god name drop uh, uh richard garriott and ernie klein for you know two decades both of them uh yeah. we happened to be at a party together and i was like well let me this is too good to pass up let's take a picture of the three of us or whatever yeah, but that's also something where you guys have known each other for a very, very long. Time, right. 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 Uh, and, and I'm I'm similar to you. Like I'm I'm not a I'm not a, like oh my god can I can I get a picture please because like I don't know I, I never know it and also like I don't know if it's gonna be weird and and also for whatever reason like I I <sighs> it's also a status thing you want to be you want to to if they remember you you want to be remembered as somebody who was cool and funny and interesting that they would like to call next time they're in Oakland not as the fan that they had right it's it's like uh, does that make sense yeah yeah uh, no absolutely and, and, and <laughs> by, by the want, way especially... flash flash forward to Saturday afternoon after night attack we're all alone after night attack and it was like huh wonder why no one wants to take a picture with us I yeah, guess I guess, oh, well, I guess we're not friends <laughs> hey jerks <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, uh, but like, you gotta understand, like Robert Smigel to me is is one of those like comedy gods, like you know, SNL, ambiguously gay duo, and and you know TV Funhouse, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, Dude, uh, Conan. I, I've got There's, his ex president's uh, uh, parody comic book where where uh, based it was a whole issue that they did on on the ex presidents as superheroes. Dude, I will take the belt on this. I bought the Triumph the Insult Comic Dog album. Yes! Did, starring uh, with, the, with, with the single Cats Are Cunts. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, he is, he is an absolute... I keep looking over my shoulder to see if he's going to walk by. This is going to be so fucking awkward. But anyway, 
there is just this this moment where I'm like, I gotta have some interaction. Like he's here at my work, right? Well, and, so and even it, even I, if just to say, like, well, well <laughs> hey, it's my work zone. Uh, what's uh, going on over here? Oh, I remember. I know who you are. Like, I gotta have something. Yeah, well, right? sure, and main, mainly because you know future Justin will never, ever forgive right now, Justin. This is the one moment that you can settle this debate that's going to rage for theoretically another seven or eight years till you die. Um, Absolutely. Like, like, you can settle it now. This prior. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, uh, but but basically, it's like you're going to have to live with whatever you do for a long time. Absolutely. And so I'm like, okay, you want to know what? I'll do super pro, business professional. Bro to bro. Uh, handshake. Handshake's the way to go. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm like, all right. I first go in for the handshake. And as he uh, – so I'll see you later, J.D. Uh was that him? I, I, was that him? Just nod. No, it's not. Just wink. Wink awkwardly if it was him. No, no, no. Okay, wink, the, wink. That, super that's chill. The for him, for him. If, okay, all right. Eyes are still wide. <laughs> 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 the audio is uh, So I'm like, okay, I'm going to shake the hand. But I don't see him as he turns around. And I go to stick out my hand to go and shake him. And he sticks out his hand to shake mine. Except in whatever handoff. He now has triumphed the insult comic dog on his right hand. And you're trying to grab the face of triumph. I have the insult comic dog. Oh my God. The actual. And he goes along with it. And I'm, I'm shaking his hand through <laughs> triumph the insult. That's amazing. <laughs> now this oh short circuits God. me. I can't. I'm like, just like. Well, and, and and now it's awkward, and it's like you can't not say something about well, it. Well, no, here's over here. So this is the photo that was taken by uh, Ben, one of our producers. And and what happens now? Right oh, now that hold on, if we zoom out, you can see. I can see the shape of of him right there. I can see he's that's triumph. Yeah. yeah. So I I shake uh, uh I shake the, I shake his hand as triumph. And then I'm just and like, you, and the hey, first man. thing you think of is like, this is the hand of the face that was in Lassie's cunt, you know, or whatever, yes. whatever he claims. Oh! Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll take it. I'm going to buy the album with that $10. Good, <laughs> that's like, good. So, uh, so initially in my head, right, this is back when I'm, I'm clear headed and I'm super pro. I'm just going to shake his hand and I'm going to say, Hey man, big fan, super pro. Right, kind of thing two business associates would say on a golf course, right? Is, is that what you did? Did you pull it off? Did those words come out of your mouth? They did. As I was shaking Triumph, uh, Robert Michael said through Triumph, I said, hey, man, big fan. Man. And then I realized what I was doing. And it just all went downhill from there. Okay, so what, like, what happens? Do you, do you just collapse? No, so then it's like, so you know, like, Shame, as we were talking about, you know, the, 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 the shame kind of moment, right? Sure. It has a tendency to kind of expand time. And now all of a sudden, a second is four seconds and everything is taking forever, right? So in my head, I'm like, cool, super pro. Pa, hey, put her there, pal. Big fan, by the way. Anyway, I'm going to go back to being the star of this show. Um, except... It kind of like starts like that big firm handshake. I realize what's happening with the puppet, and I'm just like, "Hey, man, <laughs> big fan." And he's like, "Oh, thank you." He's very shy. I've listened to interviews with him and everything, and I know he's 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 definitely like a a shyer guy. So I wasn't expecting any kind of like like, "Okay, well, thank you very much." Like, "What's your name?" Uh, and so he's like, "Oh, yeah, thank you." And because of that time dilation. I'm just like, been, been watching, watch all your stuff. <laughs> you know what? You know what? And then, and then, and then, and this is what gives context to the picture. Then it's like, because I can't stop there. I'm just like, you're, you're, you're a legend. 
<laughs> and that's what you see from the, in the immediate aftermath. Well, my, my favorite is apparently she hopped on a flight and has been uh, following us. I'll be damned if behind you staring down judgmentally is not the finger cloud chick from the audience in Indonesia. Like, oh, I, think, <laughs> I think she that's definitely racist. showed up. Uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that, that is super producer Rita Chan, who has been, uh, who has been great, but she, uh, yeah, she definitely looking on, uh, uh, surely disapprovingly at, at my, at my horrendous bots of this Robert Smigel interaction. Uh, and, and uh, you, I, I, I hope that that is a bit of a, a smile on, on Smigel's face as he, as he walks away. I, I can assure you that my head was totally hung in shame, not the seconds before oh, I had dude, to dude, it was back totally there. great. Can I? Can I just put something out there? Who's who's the awkward person that you're worried about showing up, though? Who? What? Huh? Me? Justin. What? Wait, what? Ju I, I'm sorry. Th that's the only piece of this mystery I don't know is is who would it would be awkward if you saw them just now. It's Robert oh, Smigel. Robert Smigel. No, he's oh. like literally. He's, oh. He's, he's at Funny or Die oh, is like amazing. literally right over there. They're all over oh, there. My God. And so. If I'm talking about him, the only thing more awkward than talking about this and talking about my awkward experience is if I walk by and then literally it's like, they're right behind me, aren't they? All right. Justin, <laughs> I, I love I don't, this. Uh, I love I, uh, this. Can somebody green screen that behind him? I, I don't I know. Actually, I actually don't think he's there. People are saying to go make it awkward. Actually, I, I was looking over there right before. I, I think it's only the funnier die staff that's over there now. Okay. I think he's gone. Can I, can I just put something out there? Like if I was kind what? of shy and like like really funny yeah and i probably didn't mind little awkward moments yeah you like would, you'd walk around with captain crunch no like if somebody i knew was approaching to shake my hand i would put the puppet on my hand and shake it and then be like oh man watch him twist <laughs> you know <laughs> i feel like that might have been a little you intentional think this is like a, a shield then this is a a, a, a a reflex. I I think it's a That's brilliant, Bonnie. Oh. That's brilliant. I think it's a little like maybe, let's maybe, see so, what so he let's let, see what this guy does. Look at look at the smile on his face yeah. under that context. If he's like got another one. <laughs> like you think he's oh. just like got that <laughs> mother. Like mother. you got defeated, you got got, and then he's like, hey, that's another one for the bank. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I can see it. By the way, I, I, I've, I've forgotten uh, uh, his name already because I'm because I'm a, a, a dick. But the other man in the in the corner is a, a famous uh, a, a famous politico. Uh, the, the, the Bill Schneider. Bill Schneider is that that he came on the set right after that. So I had this awkward interaction. With uh, with, with Robert Smigel, and then and then had to sit down with Bill Snyder, who's covered politics for fifty years, as I like, who's effectively like a a a, 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 a Jack Russell Terrier that they train to read news, like has to bark out like, I don't know how weird was the cruise thing last week. <laughs> uh, oh oh uh, yes, is, is that what? You, which one was? I you? asked him. I asked him. Got about it. That. Got it. Okay. Like, I yeah, I thought you were yeah. saying he said that. <laughs> oh, I was no, like, that no, doesn't no. sound I like a pro news that. man. I have, but I'm the host, so it's like I have to drive the conversation while two people who are sitting, uh, uh, Michael, who's our chief political correspondent, and Bill Schneider are on this like couch, and I'm like man like i literally do podcasts from my room like i am, I am like the literal definition the the, the stereotype of of the, the the podcaster right sure you know and uh and, and i'm like i don't know well i don't know bill uh what do you think about uh you know all this bernie delegate kerfuffle real barn burner huh <laughs> uh you can't pass up the Oh, all the burn thing. Have, yeah. you noticed, have you noticed all the uh, – it's so weird because my Twitter feed is, of course, filled with the internet, which means everything was all Bernie for, for six months. And now the same people who were like, you know, ah, oh, feel the burn, burn this. Blah, blah, blah. And now all of a sudden, now that, that, you know, it's clearly time to move on, you got to support the real winner here. Let's get yeah. on the same team. You can't let Trump win. Now all of a sudden they're calling them burners. These are the same people who supported Aww. Bernie Sanders. But now now that they, they, they're all like, hey, man, let it go. You know, quit being such a burner, a Bernie bro. Oh, burn, 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 burn. oh, burn, oh burn. They, they, they've, they've, abon they've, they've abandoned the uh, abandoned the cause. Yeah, now well, now, now they're, they're, got they're her. yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it's weird. There's, man, did you know 
and this is something that I've talked about a lot on BitTorrent, but I feel like there's a, definitely some comedic mining here. That, like, up until literally he, like, gave his delegates to Hillary Clinton, there were people in, uh, you know, we, we've been streaming at Facebook.com slash Daily Dot, people in that chat room, and I've talked to many of them out here in Philly, that are, like, were real hardcore Bernie truthers. That, like, you know, delegates can't melt steel beams, Bernie truthers that thought that no matter what, everything where he was like, oh, he endorsed her. Yeah, that's exactly what he would do if we were playing the cloak and dagger oh, game to perfection. No! Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. It was as so he came out on stage last night and gave a speech saying, we must elect Hillary Clinton. And they're like, yeah, of course he said that. But he didn't say he was out of the running. Makes you think I am a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's uh, that's the whole uh, mentality on the um, uh, the whole conspiracy theory thing, and like um, uh, what they've done. Not not to get sciencey, but it's like they've taken cults who have believed that the UFO is going to pick them up at a certain time or place, and uh, let's say ninety eight percent of them are all there. You know, ninety eight of them are there the night, and then uh, and then you know the UFO doesn't show up, and then the the cult leader comes out and says, "Yeah, I just got a message. Uh, it says you prayed real hard, and we saved the planet Earth." And everyone's like, "Oh yay!" And they just double down on everything. And those two people who didn't happen to be there because they had, like, scheduling conflicts, and they're like, yeah. we heard the world was going to end anyway. <laughs> like, for whatever reason, like, their cars broke down on the way. They weren't there. Like, if they weren't there, they didn't so much stay with the cult. Everybody who was in the cult was like, all the way in. By the way, not if – look, look, man, I'm, I'm in Did a cult, Did you really too. just do that? I, I, didn't, mean, I didn't mean to make you them really a cultist. Did. What I'm saying is, is when you're surrounded by like-minded people, you reinforce things that you already believe. And I think uh, freedom is great. Yay. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the, the, the funny thing about the Bernie thing is that there it wasn't everybody and it was certainly just an element of it. But it was the first time in a, in a very long while that I had seen a fairly benign political conspiracy, because normally the political conspiracies are like Hillary Clinton murdered Vince Foster. Right. <laughs> yes, or like, yes. you know, like 9-11, you know, or Sandy Hook or something like that, where it's like. These very gruesome kind of things that, like, it's a hard time having a fun time with. But I actually really enjoyed the Bernie conspiracies. I thought that those were, I thought those were great. Where it's just like, like, yeah, of course. Like, but, but did you notice that when he said that we need to elect Hillary Clinton, he raised his left hand and moved his right index finger, the universal sign for I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, like uh, the fact that, uh, man, I, 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 like at the RNC, the uh, like I called you immediately, like, all right, what's up with that Hitler salute? Laurie Ingram, is that for reals? What's up? What's up? And you're yes. like, yes, oh my god, can oh, we really talk yeah. about this? Let's yeah. talk about this. Uh, all right. Okay, are you, oh, I know somebody's on out of here. Tip tap, tippity tap. Wait, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what Bonnie it. was com communicating is that she is that Bryce is on the case calling it up, but instead it sounded like she was suddenly telling a ghost story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I think, I think I... what Bonnie's trying to say is that uh, Bryce is balls deep in that keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> The first Whatever accurate that use, use of that right now. Okay. <laughs> I still don't understand it. Nobody's really explained it. Oh, have you not seen me. it? Uh, we'll no, see. no, what? balls deep. Nobody's. No, really let's get to Laura Ingram. You know let's get to <laughs> Laura Ingram. <laughs> but we're just going to leave it. Yeah. 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 All right. So here's the deal. Last week at the convention, Laura Ingram gave a speech uh, and she gave what we are reading on the Elite Daily is a Nazi salute uh it is her uh with her arm you know up in the heil uh position Sorry, uh, uh, okay uh, yeah Go okay back. when you watch it in motion it is fairly yeah because she locks she locks the the she, elbow that's right? right yeah she locks and also she adopts her face has a very kind of stoic stern expression like she was hailing dear leader and then melts away to smiles as she points like there's six points it's yeah. heil wave wave point 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 
You know. All right. So Brian calls me <laughs> while I'm flying back from Cleveland to Oakland to spend 12 hours and then fly out. To and by the way, keep in mind, this is just after Justin has had a triumphant first round of one of the most exhaustive journalistic gigs he's ever had. And, uh, and yeah, I know that I'm supposed to start out by congratulating him and say, hey, despite your crazy schedule, it was a really good night attack. Go ahead, hold on, I wait. Can I give – this is my impression of Brian. It's like he, he – I, I answer the phone and it's immediate, uh, like, apologies. It's just like as if we had been talking for hours. He's just like, like – Okay, so, uh, yeah, exactly what you probably just said. Uh, okay, so I know I should be saying, uh, yeah, uh, you're great, and I watch you, and, uh, you know, definitely all the polish and poise, and uh, I know that you've, you know, worked really hard, and this is definitely a culmination of that, and, yeah, bye -bye, and you were uh, really great, and me and Bonnie were watching, and, uh, you know, I usually hate political coverage. Hit the ta. Uh, okay, uh, also, well, what else? Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, okay, uh, you were very funny. A night attack, night attack was great. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic. I feel like we're really in a great groove. Is there anything else? No. Did Laura Ingram really give a Nazi <laughs> salute? Right? And what's funny is like you're getting ready to get on a flight, or they're they're making announcements. I was on a flight. You're I was delayed. On a... Like like yeah. they're, they're all like uh, it, it's like I'm annoyed because I hear the captain get on and be like, oh, "Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're now in hour six of sitting on the tarmac." And I'm real sorry that I know you're all super miserable, and probably the last thing you want is your jackass co-host calling to argue about whether or not Laura Ingram gave a Nazi salute at the RNC, but uh, <laughs> I'm afraid you're out of excuses, and you're going to have to listen to it. No, 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 no. I think it goes like this. He goes... We would have taken off already, but some asshole is on his phone. We're looking at you, <laughs> Justin Robert Young. Oh, man. Uh, oh, no, God. That was like at hour three of a five-hour delay on the tarmac. I think oh. everybody was cool to do whatever the hot hell they wanted. Uh, all right. So Brian calls, and we, we, we proceed to break this down, and let's break it down again. Uh, let's get that gift back up. Brian, explain your theory of what happened. Okay. So my theory is, this is a conservative talk show host who's been asked to speak at the RNC. Uh, I haven't been paying attention. I don't know if she super duper loves Trump, but I think a lot of people are going with the program because they like the party, if not the guy. Uh, she also, when I have heard her, has seemed pretty savvy, pretty clever. Um, uh, not about Brian. sarcasm at all. Hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. But what's savvy? But but like um, but like this seems like a dog whistle. This seems like a little wink because the only question anyone has, because there's no doubt that that she made a Nazi salute. The question <laughs> is, did she do it on purpose? This is her version of flashing a diamond club symbol so that six months from now. After Trump has already lost, she can roll her eyes and say, like, oh, that guy. Yeah. Do you see when I intentionally gave a Nazi salute to point out what a fascist asshole he is? Uh, yeah, that definitely happened. That's what I uh, Bonnie, when you watch that, do you think that Laura Ingram – in fact, let's get a, uh, let, let, let's get a, 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 a thing here. Let's get a, 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 straw, oh, a straw bowl. bowl. Yeah, let me – Yeah, a straw bowl. Is Laura Ingram's Nazi salute uh, on purpose? Uh, yeah, is, that a fair, is that a fair ask? This is, this is my opinion. You want to hear it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and you are uniquely qualified as someone who flashed the Diamond Club symbol on, <laughs> on television. Okay. So let's – I'll just take it. I'll just take you through my experience. I'm talking to Brian. I'm saying, oh, gosh, you know, wow, this is kind of weird. I'm getting kind of nervous. I see these guys setting up these lights, and I know the only thing I care about is flashing the Diamond Club sign. <laughs> so, like, I, you know, I didn't practice anything. I knew they were going to ask me questions, and I was just, you know, I didn't want to be all, like, rehearsed. But I knew I had to get that club sign in. So I'm like, how about this? It comes in from one side. I don't even remember what it was, but like, like it was rehearsed. Yeah. This that is popped. rehearsed. That popped. This is rehearsed because then she smoothly transitions over to, okay, I don't want to She's get even it. smirking while she and does she's it. she's smirking. She's like, smirking. It's the smirk that does it because I like totally smirked after pulling it off. I, <laughs> and that's why they put it on TV was because I was like, Oh, wow, she actually looks natural and happy here. You know, everything else, she's awkward and really horrifying. But, like, but like, I pulled it off, and I was like, genuine smile. 
And then this is this is her with like a real. Well, she doesn't look like genuine smiles, but she does look like she got away with something, right? Okay. I feel now, like. Uh, yeah, Bryce. Yeah, Bryce. 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 Uh, Bryce, uh, you Bryce, weigh Bryce. In here. I, yeah. I I would say uh, if it, if it, I was in this position, I feel like uh, I've. Is this the end of her speech? I think. And yeah, this is she's she's thanking everybody in the audience. So I I would I would probably get into the the uh, the weird ha- hand eye coordination of like trying to wave but also trying to point and getting the worst combination of those two. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> that, and the, the, the Seinfeld theory I think is a strong one. Like okay, so yeah, so you moment. are you are saying accidental. I am shocked that nobody in our expert three person panel <laughs> went with. She's actually making a Nazi sign. No, no, no. no I think no, she's. No. I think she okay, is no, that's making fine. it. I, 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 it's, I uh, it's with I her right your hand. Position. I, I understand that your position, but yeah. Brian, what is one of our favorite sayings about trying to be too clever with something <laughs> offensive? Uh, okay. At the end of the day, you're still the one who said "ching chong bling bling bling." <laughs> <dong." laughs> Even though you meant to make it you an meant indictment. to illustrate that it really is offensive. Yes. But at yes. the end of the day, you're, you're the one who said yeah. ching chong, chong bling bong ding, 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 ding dong. And Brian, right? I, Brian and I probably spent like an hour out on the deck talking about this because I was just like, D- did she throw herself under the bus? Because we all see her. Th- like she like hates him that much that she throws a Nazi <laughs> sign. He's like everybody knows she did a Nazi sign. So is she a Nazi? And that's what we're all thinking. So so I mean, here's what what's what's fascinating to me is that in your guys's theory, it's she's sitting. You know, she's got a glass of wine or something. She's put her kids to bed. She's like, yeah, I know how I'll get them. <laughs> It's like it's like that moment from uh, from Mr. Show where it's like she's thinking she's like yeah I'm gonna fuck me a fish <laughs> and she's just like like okay so here's the plan and she's got a six months chart like okay at the point I make the salute and then if he goes twenty two three or ten points down in the polls I begin to give hints that it was indeed what it was but really we'll measure its success by how many people view my Nazi salute as a dog whistle that I don't really believe in this but I think he's a Nazi, not that I'm a Nazi because I'm the one on stage giving the Nazi Heil Hitler. <laughs> I don't know. All I'm saying is the straw pulls in, and it looks like uh, looks like the Nazi salute has the votes. Seventy-five again... percent to twenty-five say oh, yes. Oh man, I don't know. It just it so just that seems so like... yes, yes incorporates both. That she did ironic it as a dog and whistle. unironic. Yes. And yeah. it's, it's unironic. <laughs> First of all, nobody thinks it's unironic. You're the only one pushing the unironic. I am, I'm, I am, I am totally with Bryce. I feel like this is the the uh because look at all right, so let's go back to our Zapruder film here. Uh, she goes and and you can see it's right there on her face that she goes into beauty pageant like Whatever panic mode, I'm just going to put on the face and, and go forward. She's trying to do the points, right? She's doing the wave and the point. She does the very the worst thing that you can do oh. is the combo wave point, which is uh, Heil Hitler. Wait, Maybe wait. that's why Hitler dug that, because he was like, <laughs> it's Captain, just so natural. Captain Fubar in the, in the chat points out that she's just, she's just locking in her vote. So, like, she could go either way, like, deny it. If, or, if he oh, doesn't, yeah, if Trump or, is suddenly like like up on Mount Rushmore, like yeah, I supported Trump, which is why I did Heil Hitler. And yeah, which is why I hired him. Well, unironically, and that's why my head's not on a, a spike right now. Trump. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So she's not one of the you know like um, <laughs> oh, separate. Man, so many, so many. Wait, was it blacklisted or blackballed? <laughs> It was ball, balls deep. What are you? No, no, no. Like, you remember, like. She go balls deep with that salute. Buddy? And people would get blacklisted for being a, like a. They get both blacklisted and blackballed. Those are They're both. Blackballed. But just what you're right. One balls of those is deep very and funny. Funnier. <laughs> Black balls deep is something totally different. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
Bonnie, Bonnie saw the pieces of an airplane and imagined it could fly and just started laughing. And then and she's like, quick, assemble it. It's, it, can, it can still fly in time. Bonnie, no matter what your point, you're the one who said black Bonnie. <laughs> I love it when you and I are the savvy ones about being careful on our words. Oh, so this is to bring it back to that moment on the plane. That was like my like one of those very special moments where you look back at your life and you're like, okay, I feel like I'm doing something right. Is I'm in, you know, I'm on this plane. And I'm talking to Brian, and I'm sitting next to this businessman, and I'm like, Brian, what have we learned about, uh, you know, our, one of our favorite corollaries? And he's like, Yeah, I guess you are the one who says ching kong, ching chong, bling bling, ching chong. And I'm like, Yes, you are. You're just the one who said ching chong, bling bling. Oh, you said it out loud, and the guy. I said it out loud, and the business guy looks over at me, and I'm like, Whatever, bro. I'm in first class. Suck these nuts. <laughs> I had to. I had to walk past. I had to do the poverty parade on uh, Delta and thought of you or United, uh, whatever, whatever your your fucking elitist uh, jag off airline is. You I got a little walk. heated on Twitter. I saw that you're just like, like, hey, we don't need to hear about your ostentatious wealth. The proletarian raids on my favorite air carrier. <laughs> well, and actually, uh, to be honest, I actually don't mind. I think first class is a perfectly fine institution. But but, but the idiots in the back of the bus with me, uh, uh, the arguing over whose seat is whose is what drives me nuts. Because because either you either you make a mistake and you feel like an asshole or somebody else makes a mistake and you need to call them out on it, in which case you feel like an asshole. It's like it's like it's like an institution designed to make everyone feel like a dumbass. Dude, in fact, that's exactly the dude who got who I who looked at me for saying ching chong bling bling ding dong. And we had a seat kerfuffle in <sighs> in in first class. He was like uh, he had the window and I had the aisle and I mixed up the letters because it was a weird setup. And uh, he went the weird way. Of instead of asking me, or even necessarily being mean. Oh, oh wait, he, he asked, acted he asked like the, uh, the, he, the flight he, attendant. He was no, like this a, is the dude. No, 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 he just acted like he caught me. Oh my god! What? That's yeah. what? Because what I thought was bad enough is the idea oh. that he calls over the flight attendant and in front of you says, "No, oh, I don't know. Am I reading this wrong? It says five A. That looks like five A to me." But this guy instead is like, "Nice try, prol." Well, no, no, no. Well, I mean, we're both in first class or so whatever. But like, uh, but he was definitely like, it was, it was definitely very like nice try. Where he's like, <laughs> like he's like laughing like like the asshole in a teen movie. Like he's just like, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, that's my seat. <laughs> oh my god! I'm just like, wait, what do you mean? Is this is Jay the the aisle or the window? And he's like. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, well, let's, yeah. let's look up at the labels here, guy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. I think that, okay, that's okay. All right. Oh, She's like, fuck man. you. Man, that I'm is a guy that stayed up too year. late watching porn and was embarrassed to have to talk to anybody. What? <laughs> <laughs> balls deep in that metaphor right there that was crazy i'm just saying he was super awkward because he didn't want to talk to anybody and then like all of a sudden he had to talk to somebody and then he was just super awkward and that's terrible i'm Bonnie sorry he had to put laying up down <laughs> while she's contributing to this portion of the show i just want everybody to know what the scene is body really is hey. she's like she's like a toddler who gets to stay up to watch she gets to stay up to watch saturday night live the best but then, uh, but then, but she has the ability to shout at oh, it. God! <laughs> I'm gonna hide. I don't have a bra. Don't look at me. Uh, oh man! So did you see? Did you see that uh, that Rick and Morty thing they did for San Diego Comic Con? Uh, was it the 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 Georgia thing? Yeah, or the, yeah, or, yeah. or, or the preview read... of the new season? No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the Georgia thing where they just literally read the transcript word for word uh, from a thing, and I I couldn't believe it. So I went back 
and uh, and found you know looked at the doc. I found the document like I'm a researcher. Uh, I, I I watched it again, reading the document, and they had all the stammering and stuttering of of in there like like I'm doing now because I'm an asshole. Uh, it was it was amazing, amazing. Uh, wait, well, I don't even know what this is. This like a viral thing? Oh, you haven't seen it? No, it's blowing the hell up. Okay, so so here's the thing. There was a viral thing. Like, look at this crazy court testimony. Uh, yeah. And then uh, that kind of made the rounds in the uh, smoking gun circuit of people who like to read gotcha. wacky documents. But then at the Rick and Morty <laughs> thing at San Diego Comic Con, he just read it as Judge Morty. Uh, against uh, defendant Rick, because of course the way the last season ended, uh, he just got arrested and all that stuff. Yeah. So this is, <laughs> it, let's just play a little bit of it. It's amazing. You don't have a right to a specific attorney. His lawyer has made sexual advances on me. He, well, he's mis misrepresenting my case. He told me if if I wanted him to do a good job, I had to let him give me oral sex. He's had doctors at Central State Hospital put a he's false. He's had doctors at Central State Hospital put a false diagnosis on me. Okay. Um, I, I don't. You, you know, I know Mr. Wyatt pretty well. <laughs> And I don't think he has the ability to make doctors at Central State do anything. Well, they did it, and he's the one that had me sit down there. Well, you know, they may have done it, but I don't think that and he had anything to do with it. All right, well, he won't give me the discovery. He, well, There's I'm, things in discovery he's like, supposed to give jump, me. Jump forward to where it escalates in the last minute is extraordinary. The whole thing's like eight minutes long. I told uh, you what your choices are. You can go to trial. I'm, I'm just telling you. Listen to me. I'll hold myself into contempt. Listen to me. Fuck you. Listen to me. Go fuck yourself. I'm through here. Y'all done? I'm, 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 finding, I'm finding you in contempt of court. I don't care. I know you don't. And I sentence you to 20 days for that. And, and if you say anything else, I'm going to add 20 days for everything you say. Fuck you. 40 days. <laughs> fuck you again. 60. Go fuck yourself. A year. Your mama. 10 years. Suck my dick. You know this is going to be an interesting trial. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. You're not, you're not supposed to smile in court. You know that if you smile... <laughs> I can smile anytime I want. It's a violation. Now you're cussing and yelling I at me. I have you. not cussed. Yeah, you did. I am yelling. Well, go fuck yourself. Suck my dick. <laughs> That's why I'm yelling. Suck my dick. You know something? It's so amazing. <laughs> The guy just played the crazy gambit, like where he starts talking about his his big old donkey dick, and he wants a court order to get it sucked at the very end. Oh, it's so good, and yeah, he goes, he goes. Yeah, I mean the court. Do it now. I can't do it now. Do it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so I wrong. Fuck boys. <laughs> Uh, this is a kangaroo oh, Jesus. course. All right. Yeah, wow. That got that one escalated quickly. It did. It is weird and wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Hey, man. Uh, <clears throat> you want to do a little diamond time? Indeed. Diamond time, of course, is where you can shout out your projects right here on the show. Head on over to our Reddit, diamondclub.reddit.com or reddit.com slash r slash diamondclub. And uh, right up there in green text, sticky to the top of the page is our Diamond Times uh, post. So put your stuff in there. We shout it out. We have a good time. Everybody goes home richer in spirit. <clears throat> All right, we begin with our number one most upvoted story. Hello, Diamond Club. First, let me apologize for the novel that this will inevitably become. Oh, boy. Uh, the situation that I'm about to explain is kind of complicated, and I want to be thorough. Hang on one second. Let me... Uh... There. <clears throat> For the record, I'm just gonna let everybody know I think this project's great. You don't need to be thorough. You can you can actually give us a TLDR and and then give a, another thing so everybody can understand. But let's go ahead. I don't even know what it is. Here we go. <clears throat> As you may be aware, I host a podcast called The Clark uh, Clark Film, in which I review movies and TV shows. I'm incredibly passionate about this show, and I absolutely love making it. I've never had more fun making anything in my entire life. <sighs> I pride myself on, revi on reviewing as many movies as possible. How I've been able to accomplish this so far is using a service called MoviePass. MoviePass is a service through which you're able to see an unlimited number of 2D movies in theaters for just $30 a month. And I can say with complete confidence that Clark Film would not exist without it. Today I went to the theater to see Lights Down and realized to my disappointment that I have been locked out of my account after several minutes of freaking out. Okay, look, uh, the guy wants to review movies. It's a good project. Uh, head on over to patreon.com slash Thomas Clark, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-L-A-R-K. And I'd very much appreciate it if you were to pledge just a dollar a month in order to get more reviews. Well, yeah, just listen listen to his stuff and then uh, and then let us know. Holy crap. I wonder if they're closing this down. Some of the uh, power just went out around here. That's amazing. Um, uh, all right. 
Next up, go. let's, let's, we got uh, yeah. we got Tinvec, the epic butting of heads that will be the grand finale of GOAT 2016. will be held July 30th at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll find a spot at the Create Karn after party to have uh, set up an our, 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 oh, this is, uh, hey man, uh, maybe you should let me know that this is, uh, this is a Hearthstone The finals tournament. of a Hearthstone tournament. Right, yeah. and I could tell that because he used the word Hearthstone at the very end of it. Um. <laughs> yes, we're going to do a Hearthstone tournament, and, uh, and it will happen at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7.30, uh, 7.30 being July 30th at about 9 p.m. Eastern time, location at the Exchange, Orlando, Florida, CreateCon After Party. The bracket is at yolo420.com slash G-O-A-T 2016. This is the finals. They, they've been doing rounds of these uh, through June, and now they're going to wrap it up at CreateCon. Uh, oh, yeah, apparently, it's going to be Whiskey Wolf versus uh, Al Anon 6666. Nice. Uh, Sean writes Hello, Diamond Group. I'm currently working on my first 3D game called Meltdown, and I need some people to play test the first two levels. Uh, the game's an old school style first person shooter with gameplay similar to that of Wolfenstein 3D and Doom with a similar aesthetic. Download can be found at bit.ly slash meltdown420 yellow swag. Please email me at catscratchgames1 at gmail.com and let me know how it plays, how the controls handle, if it's fun, if it's too hard, easy, the bugs, and any other criticism that could be used to improve the game. No installation required. Just download, unzip, and open. Go balls deep in the EXE file. Uh, one, oh, one other thing I want to I want to put another plug in for is um, yeah. uh, the, the Heroes of Eidolon, uh, Tall Beer Dudes, Michael Lipton's uh, Kickstarter. Uh, uh, I... I, I forgot that uh that that i promised to promote it and so i tweeted it out and i want to remind everyone we talked about it yesterday fire or last week fire of eidolon fire of eidolon love what he's doing and it looks like it's funded oh they're balling right like they're doing great but as you as you know it's like there's there's what you say you need and then there's what you actually need uh, to... Well, here, let me tell them that they need more than what they are asking for uh, to do a board game. Board games are, are a lot harder than, than card games and more expensive. So everybody, if you enjoy it, get on that train now because the money up front is going to be huge for them. But speaking of tabletop games, <clears throat> uh, the contender we are, are putting together for the rest of the convention, uh, the New Deal, it is the cheapest we've ever sold, the base deck and the two expansions. So if you want to get that, it is uh, $49.99 only until Thursday night. Uh, basically all the cards that we've made uh, right there in your fingertips, uh, $49.99 right now. But again, only for the next 48 hours. If you've played it and you like it and you want to buy it, then get it. If you already have it but you want the expansions, this is the cheapest way you can get the expansions. Give the deck away to a friend. It makes for a great stocking stuffer or, or uh, you know, something that you want to give to somebody who's into politics, especially during this political season. So go ahead and check it out, uh, thecontender.us, and uh, click on the new deal. That is, again, only available for the next 48 hours, under $50, all the cards we've ever made. <laughs> Let's go to the Movie Draft Minute! Welcome to Movie Draft Minute, presented by CosmicRadio.tv for the week of July 25th. 2016. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. Though we wait on two more movies, the draft may already be decided. But you know what? If I've learned anything from the years of this draft, anything's possible. So let's go check the scoreboard. Team We Have Concerns is in sixth place with the Ice Age Collision Course bringing in $21.3 million a week, bringing their total $264.1 million. Team Court Killers is in fifth place with $496.3 million. Team DTNS is in fourth place with Star Trek Beyond bringing in $59.2 million, bringing their total to $574.5 million. Team Chainsaw Suit is in third place, $643.5 million. Team Air Trucker is in second place with $681.9 million. And in first place, the whopping $826.3 million. It's Team Night Attack. And that is your Move Drive Minute for the week of July 25th, 2016. Oh, can that be the soft opening on Star Trek Beyond that we were hoping for? Do you think we have a chance? It's all down to Suicide um, Squad. I mean, it wasn't, oh, geez, it was only 65. 
I mean, you Ghostbusters, know, it, it'll surpass Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, sec- at the end of the second week, is at $88 million. So and, it'll go to 100 Yeah. Star Trek Beyond will probably hit 120 140 maybe. I mean, we are very excited that The Secret Life of Pets is just dominant, right? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, it's doing well, but it's running out of steam fast. Uh, Finding Dory had, you know, legs for a long time. It's up to 461, but not that that affects us in our race against DTNS. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I think it's just an overperformed compared to what we – I mean, again, we bought it for 19 and I think sure. we, were, we were, you know, not expecting it to go – you know, 200. I think we were, we would have been excited if it went 200. Now it's already at 265. So right now we are 250,000 or 250 million dollars ahead of DTNS. <sighs> Question is, I mean, it's basically right now you have to call it Suicide Squad. Does it make 250 or not? And uh, it makes within me within four weeks. Yeah, within four. Oh, that is a good point. Within four weeks. Uh, Because Chainsaw Suit had uh, Batman vs. Superman, and it definitely made $330 million, but this is definitely not the two mega brands that are... The two biggest... Oh, sorry. The three biggest IP that that, that they have, you know, uh, all fighting uh, with and against each other. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It it seems like, you know, I think the reviews are going to kind of affect Suicide Squad a little bit. Uh, If it comes in being poorly reviewed, then... Uh, obviously, that's good for us if it comes in saying that, like, this is, like, a Guardians of the Galaxy level awesomeness. Um, then, you know, I, I think we do have to be in trouble. Uh, I guess the question is, so you are totally out on on Star Trek Beyond having legs, huh? No. I, I mean, I, that is correct. I'm I'm out, especially because we got Jason Burns going to be a good, um, you know, all those people who are upset about... Bernie Sanders, they're gonna want I'm anything not, that has the I'm word "burn" in there. I just said Jason Burns, like he's Burn, just a guy Burn. you know. Like <laughs> Jason my Bourne. friend Jason Burns really Burn, enjoys the Bourne. movie. <laughs> Jason Burns. Uh, yeah, the Suicide Squad promo has been pretty pretty good. I I, I don't know. I th- I, I just feel like uh, Star Trek's gonna end up one twenty one forty. Uh, and then we'll we'll just continue to you know kind of eke out our earnings for the next well that's the other thing is we're not totally out of gas because there's no other like ice age took a dump so there's nothing big on the kids side for the for the rest of the game so i think we get maybe i mean because where do you think do you think that secret life of pets can get to three yeah i do i i think that between let me put it this way between secret life of pets and ghostbuster i'm certain there's 40 more million dollars coming our way and then that's enough to just. I haven't read the crumb head. dumb. What does the crumb dumb say? Uh, I I haven't read it either. Crap! I I need to. There was a new one today, right before the show. It's at diamondclub.reddit.com. Uh, Somebody summarize it. Somebody TLDR it. Do we do we win or not? <laughs> Somebody. Hey, uh, if anyone's listening to the show for the first time, enjoy all these acronyms. I need someone to TLDR the crumb dumb immediately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. We we, we, we got shit. Team NA, and we got to know what's up with the with the uh, the the S uh, D R. Uh, SDR. <laughs> the, the is, that standard, a, is that a computer part? Or, the standard you know, a, uh, dick rank, according to Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh, my standard dick rank is, uh, is, is very interesting <laughs> these days. God damn it. Uh, dude, I'm sure you're wiped. We went, we went long. We went balls deep in this. We did. We went balls deep. Bonnie's uh, I like the napping fact that, on the floor, apparently. Yeah, I like the, I like the fact that we were able to uh, look into the mirror, turn off the lights, and um, uh, and and summon Candyman. Hold on. Apparently, Brian's standard dick rank has chased him out of the chair. Yeah. No. Sorry. It. Uh, it's. There's only one thing we didn't get to. Oh my God. Sorry. Well, I'm still working on it. Still working on it. Oh, my God. Please tell me you're bringing that to Orlando. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to do a live performance. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. The melodica is real. Is is, is the melodica going over well in the Brushwood house? Yeah. uh, Bonnie was... (laughs) He was annoyed because I had chased her down, and she, and you know she and uh, the kids were in bed, and I and I put uh, the the melodica tube up to my mouth, and then she was looking at me like mad, like like don't you you gonna wake those kids or whatever, and I started playing it, and uh, when she wasn't looking, I 
inhaled a whole bunch of vapor from a vape pen. So then as I started playing, smoke was coming out and I was just right, like I was rocking the melodica so hard. So, yes, it's going Wait, over very well. Why did you have a vape pen? Uh, uh, um, I tell you, but then uh, the World Alliance of Magicians might get very upset with me. Oh, gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> we demand to be, to taken, be taken seriously. To be taken seriously, yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you so much, uh, of course. Uh, follow. Uh, my Snapchat is at all of the, all of the behind-the-scenes oh, no. DNC stuff. If you're interested in that, then follow that. Uh, Twitter as well. Both of them are Justin R. Young. Uh, dude, we love you guys, man. This is a great time. Thanks for uh, thanks for being the best thing that ever happened to dude, us. Dude, Orlando this Saturday. Live show, live show, live yeah, show. Orlando tickets, this Saturday. Tickets still available, Here, right? Yeah. Tickets uh, still available. Go to bit.ly slash createcon. C-R-E-A-T-E-C-O-N. Uh, we'll see you next Saturday. Uh, die in a fire. Vape Nation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nation. It's just nation now, Justin. Oh, sorry. Vape Nash. Go balls deep. Justin Robert Young. Every Jump time you blood, go, ding dong. I get so <laughs> sad that I want to drink a warm glass of Drano. Night attack. Night attack. Night attack. Night attack. Night attack. Night attack, night attack, night attack, night attack, I love you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>